Hello, Love Gospel Assembly family and friends. Boy, do I have a treat for you today. We will be listening to a sermon that was presented by our beloved late Dr. Dorothy Lewis. This is a word, a timely word, for such a time as this. The sermon was preached on November 18th, 2019. And the name of the sermon is Be Still. Now God's word is wonderful. It goes out and never comes back void. He sends it through his teacher, his preacher, his vessel to his very own people. So I want you to sit up on your chair, open your ears, open your heart, open your spirit, and hear what the Lord is saying to us this very day. Be blessed as you listen to this sermon entitled, Be Still by Dr. Dorothy Lewis. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. Be encouraged, church. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Required of us a song 
They said, sing one of the songs of the Lord. But tell me, how can we sing the song of the Lord? How can we sing them in a strange land? I don't tell me, how can we sing the song of the Lord? How can we sing them in a strange land? Well, you gotta take down your heart. From the willow tree, sing a new song to the Lord. Take, 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 take down your heart. From the willow tree, sing a new song to the Lord. Well, the Lord said to Zion, sing unto me, but Zion said, oh, forgotten me uh, and the Lord said how can I forget you your walls are before me your name is in the palm of my head and the Lord said how can I forget you your walls are before me your name is in the palm of my head take, take, take you gotta do for me right just for a few minutes I want you to take your neighbor's hand to stand to your feet as I read the scripture because we're going to be speaking about be still it's going to uh, take Psalms 46 just one person by the hand and I just want you to lift that person up in prayer and as you're praying for that person they're going to be praying for you and I think because we are doing this the power of God will fall in a special way. You may not know their needs, but you lift them up. Said, Lord, I don't know the need, but I'm praying for this one. Ask God to bless them. Ask the Lord to minister to them. 
to do in this service all that God can do by the power of God. And you're praying for that one and they're praying for you. I believe that the power of God would fall in a very special way as we understand what it is to be still. Now, Father, we lift you up tonight. We commit the service to you. Walk up and down the aisles and bless us, whatever the need may be. We commit everything that we do into you and for your glory. Bless us now as we hear. Open up our ears that we might hear what you have to say. Bless us hearts. Bless, Lord, our bodies. Bring healing, deliverance. Let us have liberty as never before to preach and teach and uh, convey the word of God. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I said before the special music was dedicated to all of us because the title of my sermon is Be Still. And it's taken from Psalms 46, and I think it's the King James, and I'm sure it's going to be on the board, and we're going to read it. It says, God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters are a roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Are you with me? The heathens raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he has made in the earth. He make his wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear asunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of the scripture. I want you to know in this psalm, there's basically three different things, and we're going to talk about it tonight. One of the things that we have is a declaration. God lets us know who he is. He says, I am. And then there's an exhortation in order, he says, to know who I am. So we got to know who he is. And of course, there's a consolation, which is a comfort, which is a, a kind of a hug when he says, be still, be still. So we're going to talk about those uh, things. You know, sometimes when we're praying, we want to be like the prophet, we want to, you know, let God's got to speak in the earthquake and he speaks in the fire and in the whirlwind. But if you know God at all, many times he speaks in that still, small voice. I mean, sometimes it is not even a voice, it's a quiver, it's a peace, it is something. But you know that God has spoken and he beckons us, be still. And you know that I'm God. So we need, above all, to know him, who he is, and then we need to understand that we must be still to receive from him. You know, you can read all kinds of classics and Shakespeare and 
all the literature that you have. And you enjoy it, possibly, whatever, whatever you like to read. But you know it is, you know, those things are like head knowledge and whatnot. Well, when you pick up the Word of God, it is life. The Word of God speaks to you. Sometimes it'll cut you deep. Sometimes it'll have you jump into your feet. But it is the Word of God. Amen? So we're going to do a little talking tonight about who God is because he gives a declaration, a revelation of himself. He calls himself the I am. The I am, which is the most positive word in the Bible. He declares, I am, not I was, not I used to be, not I wish I were. He said, I am. He said, but I am that I am. Now, the I am is a covenant name, the unbreakable agreement name of God that he had with Israel. He also speaks to us today. He speaks that I am. And he tells you, I am whatever you want me to be. Do you need a doctor in the sick room that I'm there? Do you need a lawyer? I'm in the courtroom. He says, I am a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. Whatever you want me to be, he said, I'm that. That's if you believe and receive. Now, you know, when Moses asked God as to who he should say that, that he is, you know, and the, the, the people of Israel was down there in Egypt. Y'all know the story. They had them in bondage. They were making all kinds of stuff down there. And God called Moses and said, Moses, look, I want you to go down there. Moses had been on the backside of the desert for so long in Jethro's backyard. And God called him and said, I want you to go down there in Egypt. Go down in Egypt and tell them people, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So Moses wanted to say, like, who am I? Many times when God calls you and he gives you something, God never gives you some little tiny. He gives you something so monumental. You said, well, how in the world can I do it? But he told Moses, go down there when they ask you who sent you. You said, tell them that I am that I am. That should be sufficient. Amen? So the I am is the almighty God. In fact, he's the only true and living God. And Apostle Paul says, the only wise God. Amen? Are you with me? So we see that God declares himself. He's not only positive. But he's present. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the unchanging God, the immutable God. I want you to know that change is either for the better or for the worse. And God couldn't get any better and he wouldn't get any worse. Man may change, time may change, circumstance may change, situation may change, but God never changes. He is the everlasting Father. He is the omnipotent, which in other words, he's got all power. He is the omniscient. He has all knowledge. He's holy. He's righteous. He's loving. And he's good. That's the thing. The word of God said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody hear God been good to you? And here we see that God reveals himself as God who heals, provides, protects, and he loves all of them good things. And do you know what that I am at the fullness of time? The I am clothed himself in human flesh and came to dwell among sinful men and rebuilt himself in the person of Jesus Christ and called himself, now I am Emmanuel, the God that lives with you. I am that God who's with you. And Jesus came and he said of himself, that's why we know Jesus is God, He said, I am. Didn't Jesus say, I am. I am the light of the world. 
And when he said, I'm the light of the world, chaos and darkness took flight. Darkness can't exist when there is light and Jesus is the light. He not only said, I'm the light, but he proclaimed, I am the bread of life. In other words, he can feed us with the spirit of God. He said, I am the good shepherd that I lead and I don't force and I don't drive. You know, there is a, 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 a doctrine. One doctrine is the Calvinist and the Arminian. The Calvinism says, you're saved and always saved. And I'm not going into it, but I want you to know. And the Armenian says that you can lose your salvation if you're not careful. But I want you to know the word of God says this, that no one can snatch you out of his hand. But also, because he's given us free will, we can slide and slip right on out of there. So I'm not giving a debate, but he's a God that he doesn't force and he doesn't drive. You can be there. So we don't want to get into that because he's a God that we want to sit in his presence. We want to stay in the shadow, even in the shadow. But God, Jesus said, I am the true vine. I am. There's no other way to God. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am that I am, and that I am now walks among men, and Jesus, the Messiah, is with us. How great is our God? We sang that before, amen? In the book of Hebrews, this is what it says, how great he is. Are you listening? Put on your listening ears, as Judge Judy says. When God made promises to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater he swore by himself. Come on, somebody. So in other words, he said, be still and know that I'm God. The word of God says he reigns in majesty and in power. He's sovereign. He's God all by himself. God who, and he has everything under control. It may not look like it, but he's got everything under control. First Chronicles uh, 1631, you throw that up there, it says, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nation, the Lord reigns. And it said, tell it in the heavens that the Lord reigns. Now, if you got a chance, go on and tell some angels, some seraphim and some cherubim, you're going to go and tell them that God reigns. Tell it to the heavenly host. And I often think about who is the heavenly host? They talk about the 24 elders and all of those. And I wonder, they said the creatures. I wonder if they some kind of scary thing. I don't know, but you can tell them too. There may be some things that would be hard to look at. I don't know if because of their appearance or because they shine so brightly that you can hardly see them. But tell them the heavenly host. Tell them the Lord reigns. You can tell it on the earth in the gospel that Jesus reigns, the Lord reigns. You can tell every president and every dictator and every ruler and every potentate that God reigns. Anybody know that God reigns? You can tell it in hell. You can tell the devil, the Satan, and all his foul enemies that God is on the throne He's got everything under control. And the Lord is the almighty God. So be still and know that he's God. So let's look at verse number 1a. It says, God is our refuge and strength. As a refuge is a safe place. For we know that in his Loving arms, we are saved. You ever been in God's loving arms? You've been, maybe you've been like you're going to give up, you're going to throw in the towel, but something deep down inside of you got a rain on you. You can't even fall apart. 
Sometimes you want to fall, kick like a little kid and scream, but you can't do it. Because something got a hold of you. You see what I'm saying? Deep down inside of you because you're in the living arms of God. He's a refuge for the oppressed. Those who have been put down, kicked down, cast out, homeless, overlooked, persecuted, poor, sick, afflicted. He is a refuge. He's not only a refuge, but he's our strength. In times of trouble, you can always run to him. Have you ever had an occasion to run to him? Didn't know where to go, but you put on your sneakers or whatever, you, whatever, and you run to Jesus. You know, you have been to the place almost you want to take off your crown and beat somebody about the head and chest, but you can't do it, so you run to Jesus. Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. You know what I mean? Y'all been there too. We have Isaiah 25, 4. It says, for thou hast been a strength. Then we talk about him being a strength. Thou hast been a strength to the poor and a strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat when the blast of the terrible one, meaning the devil, is as a storm against the wall. He's your strength, regardless of the outward circumstances. Those who are faithful, those who are obedient, they're going to be preserved with his mighty strength. As I tell somebody, you can't box with God. Your arms are just too short to box with him. Amen. No matter how many trials and tribulations and temptations and misfortunes that you might have, God sees you. Through them all. You know what he said? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm always with you. Can somebody say amen? amen. But ain't you glad that God not only knows your name, that song, God knows your name, but he's there to hold your hand. He's the only one that will sit up with you at three or four o'clock in the morning when you don't feel good, and he'll hold your hand and tell child everything's going to be all right. You might have a fever, but when he touches you, everything is all right. He'll hold your hand because he knows your name. Amen. He'll hold you when you're weak. He'll keep you safe, and he keep you even to them bad children. Now, come on. I know a lot of you got the sweet little ones, but when they get a certain age, they, they, they will get on your last name. Maybe you don't have that. But I had a little problem. Thank God they got grown, you know. But anyway, he will keep you through them bad children. And then, you know, he'll keep them safe because he remembers the prayers you have lifted up and also the faith. Amen. So if they haven't come out yet, keep on praying because he's going to do his thing with them. They can't run. An apple can't fall too far from the tree. Am I talking to somebody? Am I here alone? Amen. You know what happens? Because, you know, sometimes your next door neighbor uh, can't understand how on earth you're making it. She has, it seems, everything. And you have what appears to be nothing. But she keeps on peeping out that peephole in the, in the door. And you come in there looking good and people are coming up there. All that food is smelling from your apartment. And you're, oh, come on now. And she's wondering, how are you going to make it? Yet you keep on going by the help of Almighty God. Because you see, she might have everything, but you got the one thing, and that's Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, I tell somebody, Jesus, with Jesus, you ain't never got to take him to court for child support. Amen. Amen. Never. All right. So, you know, I've had some problems. Amen. Amen. So, your next door neighbor can't understand any of those things. You may be going up the rough side of the mountain. Amen. But the greatest mountain climber of all is by your side. Because this one, he climbed the hill one day and stretched out his arms on Calvary, amen, as the nails were upon in his hands, but he died for your sins, for the whole sin of the whole world. And he died to redeem you and to give you eternal life in him. 
You know, you thought you was looking good out there when the lights was low before you uh, came to the Lord because there were some dim lights. Nobody could see how bad you really looked with all that alcohol you drank and everything. But when the light came on and Jesus came in, into your life, oh, yeah, you look good now. You can turn the lights on. Amen, amen. There used to be a time they used to say, you know, you got somebody that's so handsome, but you only saw them, you know, in the dark. Turn the lights on. All right. Don't let me get lost here. Amen. But you know, he rose to live forever. So it's no longer I who live, but Paul said it's Christ who lives in me. So be still and know that I'm God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, okay, in verse 1b, it says he's a very present help. He reveals himself as a helper. Not just a helper, but a very present help. He's a right now God. He's all right, God. He may not come, you know that, when you want him, but he's always on time. Can somebody say he's on time? He's an on time God. Amen. God is a present help. Can you think about and remember how God has helped you in the past when you think about that? Are you confident? Are you sure that he will help you in the future? You got to know that. You know what? You got to trust God and to be determined to ask God for help. Stop worrying and scratching your head and wondering where I'm going and what I'm going to do. Just be still. You got to be assured that the same God who came to your rescue in your past, the very same God, uh, indeed, and he will show you up and he will come to you today. The same God will come to you today and he'll come tomorrow. So why don't you just be still and know that he's God? Now, God reveals himself also as a conqueror. Verse 9 says, this is in the Amplified. He makes wars to cease until the ends of the earth. He breaks the bowl in pieces and he snaps the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. He's bad. Oh, God's a bad. Yeah, he's bad. He can break that spear. Amen. He can break the devil over you too. Oh, he's bad. Amen. Amen. In the book of Romans, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger of the sword? Question mark, question mark. Nay, no. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him, meaning Christ Jesus, that loved us. Amen. God's a mighty conqueror. He subdues nations and kingdoms. He puts up one and bring another one down. Promotion comes from God. Don't let man put you in some position in God's uh, house or what he's doing. Wait upon the Lord. Because a man can take you down, but when God puts you there, can't nobody touch you. Promotion comes from God. So the word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, what happens? The spirit of the Lord sets up a standard. Now remember, do you know what a standard is? If you don't know, I'll tell you. It's a banner. It's a flag. And that flag says, cross this line and you're going to never forget it. Amen. So thus far and no further, the spirit of the Lord says there's a banner. There's a flag. Maybe you don't have to tell nobody when they get on your last nerve. Just say, the flag is up. <laughs> flag is up. Cross this, and you'll never forget. All right, all right. So let me tell you something. We are warriors trained in battle by the king of kings. So we need to put on that whole armor, you know, in Ephesians 6. Put it on and keep it on. You know, sometimes we, we get kind of lax, and the shoes get tight. The preparation of peace where you, you slip them, keep them shoes on. Keep them digging in. 
keep that helmet on. God is our conquering king. How many know that? No battle is too little and no war is too big that he can't win. So be still and know that he's God. Everybody with me here now? Can I go on? There's a song that says, we don't need to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now because we know we're going to win. Amen. Psalms 44, 5. This is what it says. Through you, talking about the Lord, we push back enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. So in other words, God gives us victory over our enemy. He puts our adversary to shame. Do you know when people mess with you as a child of God and they do, or if you just be still and be quiet before long, they'll walk away in shame. You don't know what happened, but they're in shame. So praise God. The word says, behold, you know, he's given us this power. We are conquerors. Behold, I have given you power to trail on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall hurt you. He's given us that. And this is what I'm so glad about. At the consummation of the age, when all things have been put under the feet of Jesus, when every knee has bowed and every tongue has confessed that Jesus is Lord, Revelation 6, 2 says this, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth. Who was this Jesus? Conquering and to conquer. So we can say, right on, King Jesus. Right on, King Jesus. He's our victor. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm getting happy up here. Somebody help me, Jeff. Oh, Jesus. Now, the next thing is God is an ex, uh, he gives an exhortation. In other words, he wants us to know that he is. That's in verse 10. Verse 10, I think, what is that up there? It's least, I think, but it said, know that I'm God. Yeah, that's verse 10. So you got to know that he's God. You must experience him for yourself. You know, somebody says, well, I don't. You got to experience him for yourself. There's three things you got to do. And knowing him, believing in him, yielding to him, and serving him. So believing in him, the word of God said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now what you got to believe? You got to believe that he came in the flesh. You got to believe that he's the son of God. You got to believe he died for the sins of the whole world. You got to believe that he rose from the dead. You got to believe that he's coming back again. Amen. Know that he is God. You got to know by yielding to him. It's not just enough to believe. Doesn't it say the, the devil trembles? He believes and trembles. He believes. But surrendering your life to him. You know, not just, well, I'll float in on Sunday or Friday or whatnot. Give him your all. Surrender your life to him. And you say, not my will, but thine be done. That's not as easy as you can say it, but that's where we have to get to that point. Let him sit on the throne of your life. Because, you know, the throne of your heart is a one-seater. There ain't no room for two. So if somebody else is sitting up there, it ain't the Lord. So you got the Lord reign and sit on the throne of your life and rule and also, you got to be submitted, obedient to the Lord. Amen? So the last one, of, not the last one, but this of that particular one is serving him. Praying, and we do a lot of that here. Reading and studying the word. You got to worship openly, unashamedly. Now, what I can't understand is those people that grab a corner somewhere all shy. You know, they don't know the Lord. It's like the love gospel people here. If you know the Lord, you got to come down the aisle somehow. You got to put on your dancing shoes. You got to raise your hand unashamedly. You know, you go to the restaurant and you want to say the grace and you got like you got a headache. 
No, I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody to see me doing this. I know years ago, the lady used to come here. We used to go live in my building. She said, yeah, well, you know, I go to Love Gospel, and I believe that everybody ain't got to know what I'm doing. Well, you don't know him. Because one thing about it, if you know the Lord, if you know him, you want somebody else to know him. You can't help but do something. So even at the wall in Israel, they go back and boy, there's some kind of movement. I don't think you can know the Lord and just sit there passively with your legs crossed. You know, you need maybe some Holy Ghost fire. Get some Holy Ghost fire. And then the things that you thought you wouldn't do, you would do. Somebody said, where's my pocketbook? You know, going all up and down the aisles and everything around. Where's my pocketbook? All right. But you got to, um, we got to feed the hungry, serving others, the outreach uh, to less fortunate. You got to be praying for others interceding for the lost, breaking down strongholds of hell and walls of barriers that separate one from the other. You know what I'm talking about, that racism. You know, this is who I am and this is who the other, the prejudice and all that kind, that culture bit. Cause God says he's broken down all those walls already. He broke them down, so don't you try to build them up. Amen. And you got some kind of doctrine, some ism and schism. No, you got to serve him. So, okay, God reveals himself in consolation. He's a comforter. He consoles. He's compassionate. And so verse 10a says, be still. This is an interesting thing that I got that it says. In the original language, when 46, when I guess it was David, I'm not so sure who wrote that psalm or whoever wrote that one. The original language, and I say Hebrew, let me tell you what it meant. It means to pause, calmly think of that. In other words, all that you've heard of what he can do, he, he's wall, he's his wall, so he's a very present, all of that. So pause and calmly think of that. So I broke it down this way. Pause is a temporary cease of activity. Silence, quiet, no whole lot of activity. And calmly, it says, this means bring an end to whatever distresses you. And it speaks that inner faith that calms the troubled spirit. And it said to think on that. It means uh, 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 not head knowledge, but you need to conceive it, visualize it, envision, realize it, see, think about it. Think about the Lord. Think about his grace. Think about the way he brought you through. For high as a mountain is well, whatever. Great is the measure of my father's love. Think about it. And that's what he's talking about. Be still and know that I am God. So you know you got to pause and calmly think of that. And that's being still. Somebody help me. Help me somebody because I'm about to shout up here. Okay. Be still. What does it mean? When you get a child and you say, be still, well, you say, hush, right? Sh shush, shut up. There is an old Negro spirit during the time of slavery that it came up like, hush, children, hush. Somebody's calling my name. God Almighty was calling the name. So hush, be still and know that I am God. There's something it seems about being still that is essential to the reception of instruction. Something very important that you need to receive instruction. And that's what this is. Listen, see what 46 is talking about. All the things that God is. He, I, he is the I am. Well, Moses said in, 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 in Numbers, he said to the children of Israel, stand still and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning, concerning you. Praise God. Being still 
has to do with reframing or stopping from vain striving, a lack of confidence. Being still has to do with resting in God. For the verse said, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Words also have the connotation of to muzzle, to close the mouth. Who have a muzzle? You ever muzzle a dog? That's what it is, close your mouth, shut up, to stop the mouth, to become speechless, to hold your peace. In other words, don't get all upset and bent out of shape. Close your mouth and listen. Many times we talk too much. Get down and pray to God, ask him a shopping list of what you want, and get up and go on about your business. We ain't heard a thing. He wants to speak to you. Now, if you got, if you're rushed, just leave it alone till you got plenty of time. Because it does you no good to get down there. Because he wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. You are his. You are his child. He loves you. And before you want to get up and run out or whatnot, let me talk to you. Let me hold you. Let me know. So be still. When you can't hear, you can't hear when you're all upset and talking and screaming. You need to remember, and this is what is in the scripture, God makes wars to cease. Now, I mean, no human can do that. He is our peace, and he gives us his peace. He said, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. His kind of peace when he was sleeping in the boat and the disciples was about ready to drown. And they said, go down and wake up Jesus. And Jesus stands up and he says, peace be still. He muzzled the winds and the wave like he would a dog. Be still because I am almighty God. Hallelujah. He makes walls to see. He gives you not as the world gives you. And he will keep you. He'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now, I'm getting near the end tonight. Y'all pray with me. I hope you're praying and you hope you're hearing. You remember when King Jehoshaphat, he learned that he was surrounded by Shennacherib and the Assyrian army. He called a fast and he called a prayer meeting. For everybody, including the animals, he didn't give them nothing to eat. You fasting too. Everybody fast. Because, I mean, that Syrian army was something else. They were treacherous, and he was surrounded by three of them. So he said, Lord, our eyes are on you. And you know, God spoke. And God said, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. You ever been there when you're going through something, the Lord said, this ain't your battle. They ain't looking to hurt you, they trying to hurt me. You shall not need to fight in this battle, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen, amen. So we must be still concerning our past. You know, our guilt has been removed. Our sins have been forgiven when we have received Christ. In other words, he says he cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. But you know what we do? We run out there and go and fishing trying to find what has already been gone. We hang on to the past, to our past life. And you know you haven't gotten over it when you have testimony. Child, when I was in the world, you know that's some good thing. They're still looking at it, you know, wondering. But you, you, your past is gone. God breaks our chains. He frees us from bondage. He gives us liberty in Christ. But you know what we do? We keep the chains as souvenirs and we keep ourselves bound. Be still and know that I'm God. So forget the past. For the word, word says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So love gospel assembly and the saints that are here. Tonight, let me say tonight, 
let tonight be or the day you gave all to Christ be the first day of the rest of your life. You are a new creation. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth into those things which are ahead. He said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine we're going to wear a crown? One day we're going to wear a crown. Not only are we going to wear a crown, but we're going to wear a robe. And you know the song that I got shoes, you got shoes. All of God's shoes. We're going to walk right on into heaven. Amen. So be still concerning the present. His grace is sufficient. He's able to supply all of your needs, not some of all of your needs, and to keep you from falling. So be still and don't worry and fret about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough problems of its own. The word says that. So look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Be still not only concerning the past and the present, but be still concerning the future. For God does all things well. For all things work together. Doesn't it say that? For good. To them that love the Lord. So as to the future, God says this in Jeremiah 29, 11. You know it. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. We don't look to the past and we don't look to the present. We look only to the future to see him, Jesus, coming in a cloud of glory. He who is our king of kings. He's coming back. Anybody believe that? Oh, yeah, he's coming back. He's coming back again. So we got to be still and know that he's God. The scripture says, beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So I'm going to close with this. Calmly pause and calmly think about that. Think about what God is. Think about who he is. Think about the greatness of him. Think about God. And Jesus said, and he says to you tonight, be still, my child, and know that I am God, and I got everything under control. Somebody ought to put your hands together and praise God. Give me some kind of praise song over there, David. We need to praise God by that, because God spoke tonight, and he loves you. He knew who would be here. Amen, 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 amen. So anyway, David, you got something real quick. Okay, he got to put on his earbuds or whatever. All right. Amen, amen. How many were blessed by that? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Just praise him anyway. Come on, just praise him. Come on, let's stand to your feet and let's praise him. Come on, let's praise God. I'm going to let you out. It was a cold night tonight, and I'm going to let you out of here early. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. What you got, David? Got a feeling yeah. everything gonna be alright. Oh, 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 I got a feeling everything gonna be alright. I got a feeling everything gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Jesus. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, Jesus told me everything's gonna be alright. Oh, Jesus told me everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. 
got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Whoa, ho, 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 got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Well, did you enjoy the video today? I pray that you did, and I thank you for staying tuned in. Now, there will be other upcoming videos, so be sure to like, share, or follow our Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram page, and it's entitled Love Gospel Assembly. Now, don't forget to click that little bell so that you will be notified of all the other upcoming videos. In the meantime, have a blessed day.